existential difference was that in biblical faith we are saved by grace alone. It's God who is gracious, as it says in Romans 3, 26, that he might be just and the one who justifies, or Romans 8, God justifies, that it is God who saves and nobody else. In Catholicism, it's grace, which is not really grace because it's, it's some power channel through their physical sacraments and it's inside yourself, and it's a process. And in the Bible, it's a one-time act of God. So I could see that there's a difference. While they use the word grace and they say it's grace plus works, it is not grace. It is some sort of a, an inner power that they're talking about comes through physical sacraments, which is unknown to the Bible. Because the Bible says, not a works lest anyone should boast. So physical things do not give spiritual life. Pouring water over a baby's head does not make it a Christian. Giving people absolution and saying the words over them does not forgive their sins. So I saw that there's a huge difference between what is really the grace of God to show that he is gracious and only saves, and the message of Rome that physical things can save you, not of works lest anyone should boast. That was the major difference. Uh, <coughs> a difference also was in the Catholic Church we taught people to have faith in the Church. We said that the Church is necessary for salvation. We taught people that they must believe in Holy Mother Church. That's the exact words we used, that you must believe in the Church. And the Church has all the necessary means of grace. I saw in the Scripture, faith is in God, like Christ Jesus said, have faith in God. Christ Jesus is the object of our faith. It is not the priest. It is not the Church. And to this day, the Catholic Church says that faith is in their priests or the Church. For example, in the New Catechism, paragraph 983, it says, Priests have received from God a power that He, God, has given neither to angels nor archangels. God confirms what the priests do here below, that the priests have power, so people believe in the priest. This is not. Biblical faith is to believe in God. So it's, it is totally different. The object is different. It is not to believe in any church, it's to believe in Jesus Christ. So I saw that that was a huge difference. What was most painful of all was the difference between Christ's finished work, where Christ said on the cross, it is finished, and what I would say as priest, as a priest. I would turn and say to people, pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And they would say, may the Lord accept the sacrifice in your hands, and on and on. And I was then asking God to accept the body and blood on the altar that I had brought down as a priest. I had brought down the physical body of Christ and the blood on the altar, and I was asking God to accept this sacrifice. When Christ said, it is finished, and the Holy Spirit in the written word says seven times, once, and for all time, it is once. One sacrifice, once done. I could not put those two together. The scripture is totally different, where Christ said, it is done, it is finished, and the Catholic Church says, it is continuing. In paragraph 1367, that in the sacrifice of the Mass, Christ is contained and is offered in a non-bloody manner. There's a total difference. And that was very painful to me to see that I could not continue to say the Mass, because it was literally a blasphemy against God in His holiness and His own written word. So that was quite, quite, quite difficult. Yeah. Well, the Roman Catholic Church teaches emphatically that we have the physical body of Christ on the altar, that we have not simply a memorial, we have the physical body and blood of Christ on the altar. For example, in paragraph 1367, it says, in this divine sacrifice, which is celebrated in the Mass, the same Christ who offered himself once in a bloody manner on the altar of the cross is contained and is offered in a non-bloody manner. This is the New Catechism of the Catholic Church, official, it's their own translation. So we're saying that Christ is contained. That means he is physically present. We said the body and blood, soul and divinity. So we're talking about eyes, ears, nose, stomach, the whole physical Christ. His divinity is, is, al is also present. So the Christ is corporately on the altar. It's wrong because Christ says when he comes back, we will see him, every eye shall see him, and he will, it'll be glorified. He's not coming back hidden in a piece of bread. He said that when, when he would return, all eyes would see him. What is wrong about that is that it amounts to cannibalism, then that you are eating flesh and drinking blood, which the Bible forbids. The concept of the body and blood is explained in John 63. It's the spirit that gives life. The flesh profits nothing. Christ is telling you himself that it's not physical flesh. It profits nothing. It's the spirit that gives life. We have spiritual communion with the Lord and praise God that we do. But it is not a physical eating of the Lord. We have a spiritual union with the Lord because we have believed on him, which is the whole theme of John 6. In verse 29 it says, this is the work of God, that you believe on him whom he has sent. And it's precious because there we have the fullness of the gospel. This is the work of God, what? That you believe on him. It's God's work that you believe. So it shows that it's only God can do the work. He has to put it into you to believe. So the whole theme of John 6 is believing on Christ Jesus. It is not to do with the Last Supper. The Last Supper, Jesus said, do this in memory of me. And that's obviously what we do. We do it in memory of him. And we proclaim his death until he comes. Well, it says in the Code of Canon Law, if you do not believe the doctrines of the Catholic Church, that you have been formally uh, uh, ipso facto excommunicated. You are no longer a Catholic. 
you are automatically excommunicated. Uh, 1364, um, I think I have it correct, of the Code of Canon Law says emphatically that you are no longer a Catholic. So if you say you're a cafeteria Catholic and I only choose these doctrines and don't choose them, you are automatically excommunicated from the Catholic Church. You're no longer a Catholic. So the consequence of not being a Catholic? The consequence of not being a Catholic, according to the Catholic Church, is that you cannot be saved outside the Church. There's no salvation. If you know that the Catholic Church, if you know what it is to be a Catholic and leave the Catholic Church, according to their doctrine, you are damned.